Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist, and I'm joined with Hubby. Okay. And today we are doing our March community project in our Drawing with Fire biography group, and it is this beautiful barn owl that I just realized I did not pop up the reference. We are going to be starting with, I'm trying very quickly to pull up our reference. We're going to be focusing on the nose and uh, the beak eye. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's a little big. We don't need it that big. There we go. So we're going to start with that. Now I know some people are here for the drawing. We're doing that at noon and uh, I'm having to use my phone for the random draw, but totally fine. And we, oh, real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to Burl, our toasty, because he sent Jason and I this beautiful gift that I'm so happy with, and that is these coasters. She did a beautiful job. She's practicing her resin. She made them very shiny. I got ravens and an owl. Jason got a wolf. And then on the back side, she was trying a different um, weight of seal. And this is Flexi Seal or something like that. I've never used it. So she was testing that out. And we got Pyro Artist and Hubcap. Hey, Jenny, Arlene, Ash, uh, Jay, Aaron. Can I say something about these? Go ahead. So, bro, thank you very much. And... The wolf is perfect for me. That's very near and dear to my heart, as is the birch, because <laughs> where I grew up, <coughs> birch trees are all over the place. Oh, look at that. I didn't notice she signed the sign. Yeah, she signed the sign. I didn't notice that. Oh. But they're okay. beautiful, and I am using mine right now. So thank you, Burl. Yeah, he said I needed one for hot cuckoo. I forgot to switch over my test strip to basswood, because this is a basswood round. And real quick, I want to go over. I want this. I... I wanted to raise the grain and I did it on two pieces of round and I did I sprayed it down wiped it down let it sit for about 20 minutes and then I sprayed it again you have to be careful with the rounds and especially when they got the live edge the live edge rounds you have to be careful with because this little pretty tiny spot right there when it expands when everything starts to expand it starts cracking the bark and then you start getting a crack and then as it dries it shrinks back down this doesn't do it with a straight panel because you the way it's cut you don't have the center of the tree luckily it dried enough this was a crack that went about this far and because it dried it went back together yeah I think that's the one <laughs> and then I also had done it on a little round which I looked at today you can't see the crack at all there a crack happened here and a crack happened let me find it right there it went in about here but once it fully dried luckily it went completely back together when I burn on it and then seal it it'll stay together so I'm not worried about it, but you do need to be careful with it had I just did my spray down and wiped down one time I don't think I would have had that problem because after I did it the second time I kid you not, within two minutes, I could I started hearing pops. I'm like, what's popping? And it just pop, 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 pop. And I was like, oh no. So, lesson learned. Something I completely forgot about. Alrighty. I didn't say hi to Aaron or April. Now, do I need to go closer? I think I do. What I can do is go closer like that. Right now I'm heating up in my 18 small. I'm trying to get where I like it. So I don't have to move the camera too much, I don't think. Alright, there we go. Actually, I probably should move the camera. I wanted to keep the color, but I also want you to be able to see. Now this one has the mar has flaws in the wood. So this is in a dark area. And I'm doing a dark, bark, dark background, so I'm not worried about any of those. We are totally fine. I have the same close-up photo of the owl on my board. 
And we are going to go with three and a half to start. And I'm going to undercut the lash line right here because this is the darkest part of the eye. So I want to make sure I get underneath it. Make it all dramatic. Let's do this. Whee! I'm trying to make where the camera's not in my way. All right, so let's get in there. So because I'm on basswood, this is going to burn darker. I could probably even go up to four. But for now, I'm going to leave it here. And I'm going to undercut. And down in the link, if you're watching this on replay or haven't gotten it yet, I have the reference photo. And because I'm using the tip, it is going a little deeper into the wood because it's a smaller area. Think of it as eyeliner. Uh, I guess if you don't wear eyeliner, that might cause you a problem. Right. So it's not a very thick area. I think I overdrew it a little bit, which is totally fine, because then I can cut into it and even it out. There we go. So there is a bit of a crease underneath. There we go. And sometimes it's better to look at the color reference to see the detail. I don't have a color of that printout. So we got our indent that goes all the way down to there. All right. That's what I needed to see. Turn your wood as you need it. It's easier to turn the wood than it is to stand on your head and burn. <laughs> That's not safe. Should be a little fun. Alright. Come on. There we go. And now I'm just doing ovals. So I need to go darker, so I'm using kind of the top edge instead of the top itself. What I forgot to do is real quick grab where are you hiding? I thought it had it right here. Don't hide for me. I need you. I'm looking for my charcoal. My white um, chalk, basically. And it ran away from me. Do you have an extra one over there? Because I know I bought an extra. I am so sorry. I thought I had everything right where I needed extra it. Extra what? You're talking too fast. I found, hold on. Because I had bought new ones this is what I'm using oh chalk yeah and I'm gonna actually make the reference a little smaller because ah. you seem to be there we go maybe that works out a little better so this is what I'm gonna use to mark my white I can burn around it I can burn over it, it kind of masks off the area um, depending on how hot you're burning and I don't know why I lost my other one it disappeared on me There's one place I keep it Uh, come on. At least it will be sharp, right? Put that up there. Alrighty, so this is what I'm using. Make sure you, it says charcoal white and not pastel. I accidentally had purchased a pastel and luckily I caught it. Didn't use it. It's the chalk that's safe. Pastel has other uh, binding ingredients so that it attaches to subject or uh, surface all right so these are our highest highlights in the owl eye and I will also do this on the feathers later on and ah, probably with an oval with an angle I'm burning at and my cord did get twisted I'm trying to untwist it doesn't want me to do that all right here we go so now get in there. It's super dark because this is our most direct dynamic area. There we go and it has a little lighter area here 
So I'll leave that and pull that down. And then our eyelash kind of goes away. Let's get that in there. And see, once I have this darkest spot in and I'm happy with it, then I can adjust based off of this eye. Like the feather area, it's got black in it around the white. And I do love that it has polka dots, it kind of breaks up all the white. Gives it a little bit more interest. Let's see here. There we go. Had a little too oval. You could also use the 18M, the extra large ball tip. And the small, medium, and yeah, I'd stick small, medium uh, spoon shader to do this. I wouldn't uh, suggest any kind of writer because it won't burn as smooth. You'll have to keep going over it. There we go. Put that in there. And then the darkest part of our eye. is right in here. If you notice, I'm trying to spend more time looking at the reference than the actual burning so that I can stay on track. And let me drop that down. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and bump my heat down. I'm going to go down to two and a half, because remember with pin speed, if I slow down, it'll burn darker. I, need, I know what I need to do. I need to do this so that my cord does not go behind the board. <coughs> there we go. Alright, so we've got our dark right here, and because I'm using the tip and going slow, Down. Now that there is a shadow line that's under the bottom lid that kind of goes over the eyeball, so we need to get that. And we just pull it in from around here using the tip. It's trying to make it not make it look like an outline, and when I burn over the eyeball itself it'll fit better. It's always good to have your eyeballs fit. Yeah, you gotta have your eyeballs fit. Alrighty, so we got some dark. Otherwise you look like Marty Feldman. You remember him? Marty Feldman. Uh, Young Frankenstein, Igor? Yes. He was known for his eyes. Some dark in here. And when I go to erase, because I am going to have to... Now here I'm drawn in from dark to light. And I'm doing that because when I touch down, if I do it this way, I'm less likely to get the dreaded blob because the heat from the dark area where I've already burned is drawing some of the heat off the tip. I got to turn my eye. Let's see here. So here, it kind of blends out more into the dark area. So let's that in there. And this area can go darker, but for now what I'm doing is fine. That in there. Now we're looking at the shapes. We're not looking at any of the information. They're other than shapes. The shapes are what matter. If you copy the shapes and you get your contrast right, meaning your darks and your lights, then you will be right on for getting it right. Yeah, that's something that I've 
been relearning actually because I've been in the studio a lot in the last week Thank in goodness. particular. Um, and you know, art's like riding a bicycle, but sometimes the bicycle's pretty rusty and Muscle uh, memory isn't quite there. And uh, so something that I've had to kind of relearn is like getting these shapes, especially in like portraiture, but anything. If you follow the shapes and their relation to each other, the likeness of whatever you're doing will fall into place. And it's a really good thing to remember. Uh, now my white is a little big. So I'm going to do is go in. Race a little bit. And we are starting to get an L eyeball. Now, I do see that we need some dark over here. Now, the reflections in an eyeball, what you're seeing is how the light is interacting with the environment around the subject. So if you look close at some, um, when there's like a zoomed in picture of an eye, you'll see what they're looking at. Also keep in mind that the eye is a sphere, so that reflection is always going to have some kind of curve to it. And possibly backwards. No, 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 no not backwards, not backwards. Only if the reflection of the eye is looking in a spoon. Yep. Did you watch that? No. Oh, I did. That's that. Is it in that SciShow? Or no, no physics girl. Physics girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to. I watched. It, but that concept of it hurts my head. Mm, no, once she explains it, it's totally fine. Okay. Totally fine. All Some, right. Sometimes science hurts me. Science makes me sleepy, as does math. <laughs> math actually makes your feet physically. It makes hurt. my feet hurt. Physically. Don't do math. Yeah, you got through it. If anybody ever wanted to torture me, like, talk, I'll never tell you anything. Oh, good, we'll just do some trigonometry. Whoops. It's not a trap. Pop, okay. And I'd be like, no, no, not my feet. It hurts so bad. No. The calculations. All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to darken around the light, the eyeball, because that's what's really going to help shape it and pop it out now. And... I definitely need to go darker here. So I've bumped up to a little, little past four. Now we're gonna go in. Darken this into the eye. My on screen. See, it's starting to look like an eyeball. We have eyeball. Looks, looks judgy. No, it is a no. They're all judging me. They're all judging me. Like Alright, so let's darken up this area. They don't know me. Coffee's kicking in. I see that. Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh boy. Top today, of the morning, toasties. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Today's giveaway day, too. Mm. Alrighty. So, what I need to do is... Cook in to my color. Now the eyeball needs to go darker. And we can see that in the color that this highlight at the top is not as bright as I have it. I am gonna go ahead and turn it down to two and a half to darken it, because I don't want it to go too far. That was what a ruler. Did I didn't, a ruler. Yeah, my knee bumped it. My knee, my knee. What the toasties don't know. Every broadcast, you just throw stuff for me to fetch. I don't throw it to fetch. I throw it because I'm ah, in a hurry. Ah, ha, you don't throw it to fetch. I do. So don't. you too throw it. Yeah, they know I throw stuff when I'm in a hurry. Where does this go? It goes right here, but right now I'm going to keep bumping it. So I'll don't. Just yeah. Hang it off this hook. That's Look at that. that. Science. Well, that's what it's there for, but then it's a pain in the butt to get off, so that's why I don't. All right, we got questions. It Can won't you fall on the ground one? then, huh? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, let's see. Jenny Locke says general hello. General hello. General hello. Um, let's see. No, everybody's saying hi. Everybody's saying hi. Hi. I'm trying to blend this together. 
Why am I chat not refreshed? What's going on here? Oh. There's more. Yeah, okay. So See, I looked up if, and I saw So sometimes my chat freezes on my tablet, on her tablet. Excuses. And so I'm looking and I'm like, yeah, I'm all caught up. I'm all good. Anyway, so no, hold on. Um I see I've missed a lot, so Oh good. Jay Wells, did you say hi to him? I did say hi to Jay. Okay, Schneider. Hey Kristen. Um who has a question? Well, actually, Jay has a question, too. Mm -hmm. What are spraying and wiping down as a prep? I've never done that process. Only sanding. After I sand, I use a paper towel and denatured alcohol. Ah, sorry. Camera was really close to the board. Oh, that is really close. Denatured alcohol. That's in, uncomfortably close. <laughs> in order to clean off the board, what it does is it removes all the debris, but because it... it Denatured alcohol doesn't have all the water in it. Um, it allows the wood to get wet without raising the grain because it dries so quickly. So that, so I sand on this because I raised the grain so much on the four basswood boards that I raised the grain on. I used 150 sand, uh, sandpaper, then 220, 320, and then 400, and then wiped down with denatured alcohol. Transferred my pattern with the Walnut Hollow Graphite Transfer Paper. Let me pop that up here. With this. And now I'm burning on it. I'm actually really liking the eye. Even though it shows darker in the photo, I kind of like that for now. It may change once I um, put other things in. But for now, I'm liking that. Okay, Schneider has a question. Mm -hmm. Haven't done a community project before. Once you're done, will you post a list of pins used? I have a few, but I want to keep an eye on any others I need. Sure. Okay. Jay Wells says Marty was perfect for the part. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, he was talking about Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're the one who brought him up. Yeah, well, my chat's behind, so I have to rely <coughs> on my memory to catch Oh, me no. Up, so. We're all in trouble. Yep. Okay, Kate Schneider says, all oh, owls look judgy, also <laughs> question, mm -hmm. this is a newbie question, but you know what, it's I don't fine. Care. That's what we're here for. Um, does anyone know why I put the white on before burning? The, oh, just so I know where it's at and I don't lose it. Okay. That's all, it's just a, so I know where it's at, when I get to it, I know this is a high highlight, or even a, high, a highlight, because later on I can remove it and burn lighter. That, so that's the, oh, it's a marker. So the chalk preserves it. Um, somewhat. Somewhat. If you're not if you're not burning hot and you go over the chalk. Um, here, what I'll do is. So uh, it's kind of like a resist. Kind of like a resist. But like you're masking a, the but earth. more of a marker for you. Yep. So uh, this is the charcoal. And what I'm going to do is at the setting I'm at, which is almost three. It will burn through some of it, goes very lightly, doesn't leave residue on my pen at this lower heat. If you notice, because of how I did it, it did burn through, but it's a lighter burn. Um, if you go darker, it will burn through it. But if I'm going light and I'm going right up to the edge of that area, it doesn't really burn. Interesting. And that's why it's so important to use just chalk because yes. chalk is basically rock. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't have the oil and wax binders. And it won't because if you melt those oil and wax into your wood, then it won't be good. Well, one, it could be toxic and because of the. So the color pencil, pastels, anything like that, you don't burn over because it can mess up your pen. Gotcha. Um, I'm actually going to have to fix my cord. Here I say it never kinks up, so but because I plugged it in, it kinked up. While you're doing that, April G says, special coffee today? No, no N special coffee. No, April. Water. Just third cup for me. Oh, so, for you. Yeah. <laughs> and Arlene R says, and here I thought there was paranormal activity in your wood burning room. I don't know what that means. Oh, the, the, probably the ruler. Oh, falling, the ruler? But none yeah. of, but. They can see my hands. No, I'll just throw stuff. I didn't throw it. Whatever. He's not. 
Wanda Hewitt says, I have arrived. Hello. All hail Wanda Hewitt. We may start now, Wanda. Uh, actually, she's been here for a while, <laughs> but she didn't realize that she didn't sign in. Sonia says, I should relate. Mm, it's not too late. You're here. That's You're what here. counts. That's right. And I just realized I moved my board away. <laughs> My test board away. Aaron Smith wants to know, can you use other alcohol, like rubbing alcohol or even acetone? They have water in it. That is the problem. In a pinch, in a small area, you could... The denatured alcohol, it's also called, um, what is it, methylated spirits outside of the U.S. Um, you can get it at Home Depot for the U.S. Um, I also have my Amazon link and my kit, uh, kit page down in the description that is linked there too. Um, acetone, especially if it, it, I know some of the acetone comes pink, purple, I've seen green and blue, that implies a dye in it, so you would have to kind of test it out first to make sure it didn't dye your wood. Um, what was the, uh, uh, so isopropyl alcohol, um, acetone. Acetone. They have water in it. And you're trying to avoid water at this point because you don't want to raise the grain once you start burning. Let's see. So Jaywell says he's noticed that basswood does not make for breathing issues at night, whereas Hobby Lobby cradle boards, for him anyway, always bad. bad. Hmm. I don't know, maybe they put something on them. Mm, the uh, cradle board tends, in most cases, to be birch. Mm. And he may be having an allergic reaction to birch. Some people do. Mm. I would talk to your doctor, if at all possible. Now, if it's basswood, because you can get basswood cradle board. Um, Then you know to stay away from it. David Zinman is here. He says, hey, sorry, he's late. Whatever, David. <laughs> no, good to have you. See, I kind of got my shape off. Get this way. What I'm trying to do is just... Because right here, we have dark feathers. Now, depending on the size of the owl you're doing, you're not going to see all the details. I mean, we got a lot of detail in here, and I haven't decided if I'm going to put that kind of detail in or not, because to do that is going to take me more than a month to get this piece done. Now, I could, in order to get all these hatch marks in, I would probably have to use the 9MS, or the 9PP, in order to get into these small areas. And what it would be would be a negative burn, putting in the, all the darks and leaving the whites. But here, and a lot of this owl's furs or hair is that feathers, feathers is very similar to fur. So that helps. Where it comes out, I'm actually going to use the side of my 18S to get the the hair-like feather strokes. Yeah, Jenny says that the hardware store told her that isopropyl was denatured and methylated. Nope. Spirits has the dye in it. Now, in the UK and Australia, they may put dye in the methylated spirits. The purpose of that is so people do not drink it because it is such a strong alcohol in order for both the U.S. and outside the U.S. When Prohibition here started, in order to continue selling the denatured alcohol or methylated spirits, they had to put a dye in it in order to, um, one, not be viewed as alcohol, two, not be taxed as alcohol, and three, it's poisoned because it's a wood alcohol, um, so people don't drink it. Denatured alcohol is not, um, I did a bunch of Googling on this topic because I knew they use different terms in different countries. Denatured alcohol is methylated spirits. Isopropyl is isopropyl. Um, and then there's different levels of acetone. Right, so we're going to turn. I'm kind of using the edge. 
knot sort of a tip edge to draw this out I could go darker denatured alcohol or methylated spirits is actually a natural um, what they use for uh, natural accelerant and lan lanterns um, what else is used to clean wood <coughs> excuse me clean parts depending on what that part is um, I'm trying to think what else I read I do a lot of reading yeah you, you, you do because I get this question and I don't like not knowing the answer. So the minute I get a question that I don't know, I try to go look it up. There's that phrase that came out a long time ago hmm. in, in the 80s, I think <coughs> it was. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm hot. People want to know. People want to know. That was actually referring to you. <laughs> People. Valerie wants to know. I wants to know. So yes. I have to be careful around you because even if I pose like a hypothetical question, she'll just like, she'll get a funny look on her face and then she'll go and come if back. If I don't know the answer. She'll come back in like 30 minutes to an hour with more information than I wanted to know. And in, in fact, when it was hypothetical in the first place. Yeah, but then you can make a better decision in regards to your hypothetical. All right, I'm going to but do this. It's a joke. You're ruining everything with <sighs> facts. But science. facts are important, and science <laughs> matters. All right, it's so I, I just did a later because there's some areas within the eyelid because it kind of goes like like this, <laughs> like use. Come on, stay on my easel. David, I'm sorry to hear that. What? He, uh, he's giving his son his truck because he can't drive anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, Spence. Can't really see on this photo. You know, <sighs> shoot darn. If there's an upside to that, I hope that you Less know. Less money on gas. Well, and and also you've given him a, a truck, so now he's chauffeur. He owes you. Yep. <laughs> Now he's the chauffeur from all the years in the school. There you he's go. Chauffeur and yep. All those, all those trips to school and the store and everywhere Sports else. Sports and yep. clubs and friends' house, the mall, wherever he went. Yep. Got to call him up. Call him up at two a.m. I want some chicken nuggets. Let's go. Let's go, boy. <laughs> yep. I understand though being upset, I, giving I up do. your freedom I in that do way. As well. And relying on somebody else that really does so I, I know we're joking in regards to that but yes uh, truly truly sucks Spence over the fence is saying hi to you hi Spence let's see this is a darker line I'm trying to spend time here because all the for me the eye dictates how everything else is gonna go. And I like a realistic eye. That is true. You, see, you made a very clear and uh, um, factual statement. Yeah. I dictate. Sal is a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. <gasps> don't tell them that. No. I don't do that. We work together. I know. We're a team. We're a team. And I do. Anything I want, whenever you tell me that it's okay. True. <laughs> he's fibbing. Oh my gosh, he's fibbing. You're fibbing. I know I am. That head. We are a team. We are. I'm trying to find my lines. No, no dictators around here. No. Nope. Around here. Nope. Hey, Spence. So I'm just trying to get my darks kind of laid out. I'm not. I'm going to be a slave to them right now, and because they're the cut, the lightness of what I'm burning right now is the lightness, lightness tone of the further ones out. I can blend it better. That is what I'm trying. Whew. 
You sure you didn't have special coffee? I don't want to be around when I come down from this caffeine high. You'll pass out. Probably. Now, <laughs> now remember, there's always an ugly steak, and the ugly stage sticks around for quite a while. So don't... Even if you decide to yell at the piece, totally, I totally get it. I yell at my birdings all the time. Just remember. Out, outside, that you see people walking on the sidewalk looking at the house. Come out a little bit more and there's birds coming out of the trees. That's only when I have to add to my curse word vortex that's above me. Yes. It is quite It's ominous. getting big, isn't it? Yeah. You're getting big, so. Yeah. Yes, Spence Burrow is probably enjoying her holiday right now. Um, no. Oh. She's not he, sad. No, he doesn't leave yet. He did say that he wasn't going to make um, at least part of the live. Mm. So I'm guessing she's getting ready for, ready for her trip. You know, David, I understand that he he's, says he's on so many uh, medications. I feel you. I am. Um, God, I was like 21, 22. And the first time I realized that medications could be really detrimental. I used to be on flight status, and part of my job was to, you know, fly helicopters. And we were flying one day, and I couldn't do it. Like, I, I, it was really bizarre. Like, I, you know, trained for this, but I couldn't keep, keep us level. I couldn't get to a hover. I couldn't do, and uh, my pilot, he was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm a little under the weather, but I'm fine. He's like, did you take any medications or anything? I was like, yeah. And I, anyway, it turned out to be a muscle relaxer that I took, and it, because I was a kid, I never dealt with a muscle relaxer. I was just like, oh, it must be like aspirin. I'll just go do this. And he's like, you should not be behind, be behind the stick right now. And I was like, yep, got that. You have the controls. Oops. <laughs> David says, Jason, where are you and what drugs are you on? Well, a lot, well, of, a lot of caffeine, David. My my drugs are stronger than his drugs. And I just, because sometimes during the, because when I sit in one place for too long, I get sleepy. So I've been trying to get in better shape and so the um, <clears throat> a little bit before the live I worked out for a little bit oh, did you? so I've got a natural high right now yeah and then he'll pass no, out probably anyway um, I do uh, well I'm not on a muscle relaxer anymore I am but I'm um, I am on a I'm at, I am on a pain medication I'm trying to get off of but it's very addictive it's prescribed, though. Never fear. Yeah. It's prescribed, not self-medicating. Oh, the self-medicating would work better. Yeah, no flying while muscle relaxers. I'll never forget that because I'd look and then it seemed like my field of vision would catch up with me. Like <laughs> I, it was like delayed vision, which was really having a serious effect on Ooh, my ability. I messed up the eye. No, you didn't. Yeah. Not too dark. Do no taking medication isn't fun for sure. The thing that you don't realize—I don't want this to be about medication—but the thing you don't realize about medication is like the other side effects. Even if they're like minimal, like it affects your whole system and causes other issues. So, which is why I'm trying to get off the pain medication because it's caused so many imbalances in my system that I have a hard time doing other things. So, um, like stretching and walking. What's stretching? <laughs> huh? I said what's stretching? I've just not, I mean, I haven't stretched as much as I have and yet I'm getting older a little bit. You? Hey. Hey. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to interrupt because we are going to move down to the beak. Do we have any questions yeah. about the eye? Yep, me too, David. Now, I see that Kristen is asking about the Tombow Mono hey, 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 let me do my job. Well, then do your job. So Kristen says, you didn't see this, but Kristen says, I noticed the eraser 
Any recommendations other than the sand? Okay, so that's the sand. She can't use them because I of the I see that latex. latex. Let me read. Uh, I have one job. Oh my God. Well, two. Where is it? When I you throw it? stuff, I pick stuff up. I think in the drawer to your... No, I thought it put it there. Maybe the drawer to your left. What? There should be Vanna, four and one erasers in a pack. Okay. Which drawer? Top left. Uh, got it. You got it? I don't know if these are latex. They are um, four and one, meaning, um, what does it mean? They work as a white eraser. They, you can use it as uh, a needed eraser. What I mean by that is you can do the, that stuff. Um, they're, they're not, it doesn't list what's on them. No, that's what I'm looking for. So these are the main, or this is the main eraser. When you see this eraser in my hand, this is what I'm using. Uh, latex free. Um, this is PVC free. So that's not the same thing, is it? Faber Castell? I don't. I don't think that's the same thing. Uh, latex free. Other than needed, er or needed erasers, latex? I don't know. No, they're like gum. Is that the graphite paper or the eraser? This is the eraser. The graphite paper is that. So, um, Wanda has a question. Mm hmm. She's noticed that when you erase your marks after you've written the area, when she does it, she can't erase the graphite under the burn. Because more than likely, your graphite is not actual graphite, it's carbon. Oh. Um, more than likely, it is carbon paper. What you need to look at is look at your transfer paper. If it's black or dark blue, it is carbon paper for sure. Also, I have I have something. I have two cents to add here. I can't make change, so be good. <laughs> You're funny. I know. She's not. Yes, I am. Anyway, um, if you're doing like some people draw directly on their their surface and if you use anything other than a very light pressure you'll indent the surface and that'll create yeah. a recession in the board that that when you burn over it it'll raise it will it'll be difficult to erase because it's it gets into the board and into the grain I have that problem I used to have that problem painting because I was really heavy-handed um, and so I would draw my designs directly onto the surface, especially if I was using like uh, illustration board or something like that. And then my I couldn't get I couldn't get the I couldn't get the lines out because they were actually engraved into the you know yeah. embossed into the work. And so that is possible from a side view. You'd see like my my line art. So I had to learn to get away from that. So I think doing a transfer would, though, would... Well, some people do still get heavy-handed yeah. with the transfer. Mm -hmm. All right, so I put these down. I don't know how well they're going to do, and I hate when it keeps cracking like that. Uh, because right here is our darkest area of the beak. So I'm going to just kind of tap in. Spence says he thinks he can't do the, get the marks off either. I think he, he thinks he does the marks too dark. Yeah, you do have to watch your pressure. I went a little darker so you can see it on camera. And I'm... It's probably going to show a little bit. I have to keep working it to get... And that's what the denatured alcohol is for as well. When, um, when I've got all my base down on the wood, I will use the, the um, denatured alcohol again to clean the board and it will clean off a lot of graphite now if it's carbon it won't clean off the carbon because carbon when you burn over the lines carbon paper has petroleum and wax in it and when you burn over the lines it melts that and me melts it into the grain of the wood that's why you fight so hard trying to get it off so maybe that's what Wanda's problem is because Wanda says that unless she draws over the pattern in paper heavy, it won't transfer. Is that a characteristic of carbon paper? 
No, carbon paper transfers very easily. Okay. I draw the pattern. Well, let me back up. Paper because... heavy. I'm confused on that. No, she's saying that unless she draws over the pattern heavy. Oh, okay. Like hard. Um, there is a resolution for that, too, though. Hold on. What? Real quick. David gets his erasers from Mr. Mustache. So, Ron Burgundy? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, Kay Schneider says, yes, they are latex-free, thanks. Oh, awesome. So, I guess she did some research. Perfect. Okay. All right. So, I don't transfer with my soda copy because the paper is thicker, and that means you have to press harder. So, I do not use my photocopy. I make... Lovely. I make a pattern onto tracing paper, which is much lighter, and this what is another reason. This is another reason why I do it in order to when I go to transfer, I do not have to press hard. In fact, I used a red color pencil. Well, actually, I guess it's kind of burnt sienna color pencil, terracotta, to transfer, but you can hardly see the lines from me drawing over because I didn't have to use a whole lot of pressure. Huh, that's actually really good information because, I mean, and I always knew that you did that extra step, but I didn't realize why until yeah. just now. Oh. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, well, you're a perfectionist, so, I, you know, another step, got it. But I didn't realize that it... It makes it easier for transfer. Huh. That way I don't have to press so hard, which makes it easier to clean off my board. Alright, so the beak is not as dark, and one thing you got to watch with the beak is to make sure that you have, I dropped my color, photo. this part right here, it's hard to tell if that's part of the beak or not, it looks like it's part of the beak, like we have a clear part of the beak coming through, yep, it's part of the beak, so you need to make sure and pay attention to that, so that's my transfer line right Huh. How did I do it? <laughs> Shouldn't you know that? I should know that. Uh oh. Got some problems. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's how I did it. What I'm going to do before I draw any further, burn any further, so that I don't want to keep erasing, is I'm going to fix my beak. Because if I fix it, so this right here. For some reason, not do it right. So that is the bottom of the beak. It comes through here. Burl, sir. Hey, bro. And this is my dark part of the beak here. There. This is another reason to use the tracing paper because I can do this. Alright, so that spot right there should have been a point. Alright, that's what I needed. Should have been a point. Down here. There we go. This is why it's important to have an accurate photo or transfer for this right here. See now, because I caught it before I burned it, I'm not going to sit here, I'm not going to have to fight trying to fix it. See, and on graphite, it has a hard time on basswood as well coming off. But when I use the denatured alcohol, I might have to use a little bit of sandpaper. Um, we'll see. So I'm going to put this in so I don't issue so oh uh so burl's here and so is carmen uh hey, carmen. i believe it's pronounced pelletier yeah he's um, um and burl we talked about your coasters prior so if you watch this again you'll see us talk about your coasters but thank you again thank you so much they're awesome i love them all right, now that I fixed it, I can go ahead and get my dark in. And I've bumped down to two, because it is basswood. I can always darken up. And I, I know I'm bent in front of the top camera, but I need to be able to see around the live stream camera. 
All right, so let's get that in there. Because I caught it and fixed it before doing this part, it saves me a step on fixing later. And it's really important because we're all going to screw up. But if I can catch it before I do it, it means less time spending having to try to fix. All Greg, right. Greg's got to go. Bye, Greg. I didn't know Greg was here. All right. So we got a line for our beak. Let's get that in there. Carmen says I pronounced her French name pretty good. That is because I have an awesome French accent. No? No. All right. Let's get that in there. Then we have a little lighter here. We also have the beak coming underneath. So it's going to be burned. Have to look at this beak in. Bottom part of the beak in. Like that. And make sure we follow the direction of the beak because the beaks, cur they're, you know, similar to our fingernails so they curve and they indent and they have shadows and we want to make sure and include that right now it looks very rough but i will make it better all right so now let's get in here and do a lighter now it may look dark now Totally normal, but when I get the rest of the burning in, it will lighten up. Because right now, our eye is drawn specifically to it. And then once we have other information in, and we have our contrast fixed, things don't stand out as much. And we have a high highlight along the edge that I probably should put in now. And that had a highlight there, 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 there. That's right on the edge. Oh, I just got an email. I haven't read it yet. From uh, uh, Wood Carving Illustrated. They still want my owl. But I have to redo it. Alrighty. Because I'm going over the graphite. And then the charcoal does not go over it as well. Yeah, so look at that in there. And then when I actually darken up some of the other areas of the cur of this part of the beak, any lighter burns will go even lighter. And we have feathers all over the place here. So how to work that out? I would recommend trying to do as much Some of this is going to have to be scraped out, I think, it make it easier. Some of it, I don't know, is necessarily information that must be in it. And what I mean by that is, if you don't want to put every stroke in, you don't have to. Um, if you get your... Finally, I was getting warm. If you get everything in the right sp uh, place contrast-wise, when you do draw uh, strokes like this, it does start looking like feathers. So you don't have to necessarily go in and put every single stroke in there. You can get away with inferring the information. Some, sometimes. And your brain will fix it. Sometimes that gestural work, or the what you you said about the implied information, mm -hmm. sometimes that's the better way to do it. Because if you try and do everything, you know, every single thing, like when you draw hair, like you said, you draw someone's hair. It's the you're, not, you're not trying to do every single strand because if you did that, it'd look like a mess. It'd look like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you about the? Because I when I originally, because I was. Uh, God, I must have been like 12 or something like that. And I I did the the drawing on the right side of the brain book. Yeah. And I took that course. And I misread the entry in there. Oh, yes. Yes, you told us. It, 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 the entry says, 
in order to, you know, replicate hair accurately and convincingly, you do not need to draw every single hair. But my 12-year-old self read it as you have to draw every single hair. So for years, I was trying to draw every single year hair. It always looked stringy. And yep. It's <laughs> too much. All right. I've got information on my transfer. Pyro Pete's here. Hey, Pyro. Hey, Pete. That I think I'm going to remove because it's confusing me. One thing you could do is I did a video on... Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Ugh. They put it so far away from me. That's not right. There we go. On these cutouts. So this owl is actually a little bit smaller. So what I would use is my actual printout for transfer of the owl since it's the exact same size. And if I wanted to focus just on this area, I would mark them out this way. And if you notice, I'm going to have to back out. If you notice, ah, I'm going to have to lower my um, easel as well. I've got it too far up. Let's see here. I've got the same area pretty much blocked out. So now I don't have all this other information, like the eye. There we go. I don't have all that other information kind of throwing me off. I block the eye. And as long as I have them turned the same way. A little bit more. It will stay on track. And that way I only focus on this one small area. I'm not looking at any other place on the board. Just this small area. And that might help you focus. Because sometimes when you're looking at that whole thing, it feels very overwhelming. And you're like, oh, how am I going to do this and that and the other. So block them off. And I did these as two and a half by two and a half inch squares. You can do them bigger. You can do them smaller. It's whatever information works for you. There's no right, right or wrong way. But it may be something very helpful, especially because we do have a lot going on in this owl. This is an advanced burning. But in, even if you're new to burning and doing an advanced burning, you are cutting down your learn time by a lot because you're learning very quickly how to do something like this. So it may come out wrong. You may not like how it looks, but in doing this, you have, will have learned different shading techniques, different layouts, uh, different ways to use your pen. And I guarantee you, as long as you stick with it and really try, you will learn the information you want for other pieces that you're working on and they won't feel so hard. So I know it might feel overwhelming. Are we already there? We are. We are. Oh, we need to do the thing. Yeah, we need to do the thing. Alrighty. So do we have any questions on this? I don't want anybody to feel like they Spence didn't. says he likes that idea. Oh, awesome. And I have a video for that. A quick video on how to make it. Let me do this so we can see it. I'm going to go ahead and pop off the owl. Because we don't need it. Now it is time for our giveaway. Everybody, let's say Pete. Uh, Pete. Pete for joining us. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> well, real quick, David says that's a good a good trick, a great trick. Good. I might try that on my bad days because I do get overwhelmed. Yep, sometimes we all have bad days and we always get overwhelmed. So having those as a backup may help you relax a little bit and not feel so overwhelmed. Carmen has used that technique for cool. her nose and eyes. Cool. Fabulous idea. Fabulous idea. Thank you. Alrighty, so now we're doing our giveaway. So our Optimal One giveaway. We are thanking Pat from PGL because he is the one who is giving all this fabulous stuff away. I'm just hosting it. I have nothing to do with it other than collecting you guys. Alright, so first place, first prize is 200 is a Optima Duel, which includes shipping up to $40, two pins, two cords, um, to anywhere internationally that was not listed like Germany, China, Turkey, Iran, or any other place that the United States Postal Service does not ship to. So the first one is 200. The second one is 
four pens or a hundred dollars again shipping is covered I'm trying to wake up my phone and these are Optima credits meaning if you've already got the duel and you're the winner you can pick out two hundred dollars worth of pins if that's what you want wow or cords or a single you you could do whatever it is that you want to do with it with pat it's not cash value we'll say it's two hundred dollar credits for second pl uh, prize is one hundred credit or four pins and the last one is sixty dollar optima credit or two pins and those all include where's it one pin oh shoot fire did I mess it up did I just mess it up I want to check to make sure that I'm not telling anything wrong okay. luckily I can go into my announcements to see my last announcement <laughs> Phillips here you're just in time. Just Phillip. in time. Okay, yes, it is two Optima pins of your choice and forty dollars included in shipping. Alrighty, so we had everybody say polish tips are for me down in the comments. Now I can't I was going to let's see here. I'm gonna bring you guys in so we can really see. Alrighty. So this is down in the comments of yesterday's live. What do we want to draw first? Um, do we want to do the third prize or the top prize? Let's go, f well, you know what though? Because we should do the top prize first because then everybody gets a chance at it. You know what I mean? Okay. Because yeah. if you do the third pri place, then whoever gets third is like, dang, I'm out of the running for the first. Okay, yeah. perfect. So if you notice, I've taken away any duplicate users, meaning if you commented more than twice on the, more than once on the video, it's just not going to count any extra comments. It also does not include me. So for the $200 credit or the duel, let's see who wins. <sighs> Debbie Renwick. Debbie wins first prize duel. Optima or a two hundred dollar credit. Can you write the name down just in case, yes. please? Uh, I do need to find a pencil or a pen. <laughs> pencil. I didn't, I didn't know I was gonna be writing. Yeah, uh, I forgot. All righty. So Debbie, please contact me within forty-eight hours with your username, if this is not your real name, your real name, and your email address, so I can pass that pass that on to Pat. If I haven't heard from any of the winners then I will do it and within 48 hours from right now I will do another draw in order to pick a new winner and announce it next week so Debbie you are the first prize winner so let's go for our second prize that's the 100 four. that's the four pins or it's up on the screen what I are you doing just write it on any piece of paper I don't care I'm trying to find any piece of paper. there you go piece of paper throwing stuff <laughs> okay, first mm. prize. Debbie. Secretary, Ren was it in your Ren your job description? Wick. Was it? No. <laughs> okay. Now we're going on to four pins or one hundred dollar Optima credit. Spin that wheel. Train. Oh. Oh no. There we go. There no we go. There we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Chris Badgett. Chris Badgett. Chris Badgett. 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 Alrighty. Please make sure to email, uh, to get in contact with me. You can get in contact with through uh, the Facebook Drawing with Fire biography group, or I have an email address down at the bottom of the description of this video uh, that you can go ahead and contact me through. Alrighty, so that was second prize. Now we are going for the third and last prize. Again, Chris, 48 hours. Let's pick another one. <laughs> I need to sack that secretary. Yeah, well, I've sacked him a couple of times. <laughs> Alrighty, Kathy Gissel? Kathy Geisel. Geisel, you've won two pins or $60 Optima credit. But what I don't know is if any of these are international. Well, 
Kathy Geisel. That's a very. She doesn't have any wood burning tools yet. That's a very German name. She may be in Germany. No, I think she's here. Really? Look at her comment. Polish tips are for me. I'm new to the art and been watching your, watching you for a while. I have no wood burning tools yet. We we'll find your artwork fascinating. Oh there boy, <laughs> this is your way into Optima then. There you go. All righty, so we get, got Gateway Drug, Debbie, Chris, and Kathy. Thank you all so very much. Please stay subscribed to me. <laughs> I know with when people do giveaways, when I've done a giveaway and ask for people to be su subscribed, they they unsubscribe after because they were just going for the giveaway. Stick around. Hopefully you learn some stuff. Okay. Um, you had a, oh God, April G mm -hmm. had a question. Yes. Will you be doing a time lapse of the progress with the other group projects? So will there be a time lapse? Video? I did not. I did not uh, film the Fox. Sometimes I need to be able to work off camera because I'm almost positive that when I turn this camera off, I'm going to find stuff that I screwed up on and I'll have to fix. Um, I did it some for the... <laughs> self project portrait i didn't film anything for the fox if you if you take like i'll the, film like when i start some of the other areas if you take just like do a quick progress one. pictures i can always post oh i always progress do that. pictures on instagram oh i, I post them in the group april's in the group oh okay um what i could do is turn on the camera so if, when i start these feathers here or i start the, the Next week, I think we're actually going to do the dark background. We're going to get started on the dark background. Um, that way, we can see the difference of what it does. That is my plan. So hopefully, everybody comes back next week. And again, Debbie, Chris, and Kathy, thank you so much. And please make sure to get in contact with me within 48 hours. If I don't hear from you, I will have to draw again and go with the new winner there you go i'm i'm not going to get your your um, home information or your shipping information i just want your name and email address so that i can pass it on to pat now if you can't get a hold of me what i will do is still go ahead and pass it on your name to pat and he can nail down everything for you yeah that was good so if we don't have any other questions i'm lucky and i don't see any don't see, are you sure? Because you didn't do your job earlier. Okay, well, I, I, I had reasons. You. I love you too. I, I had reasons. You. you had reasons? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Happy morning. Oh, 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 no, thing. no, stay, stay. I forgot. You forgot don't last time. I know. It? Don't forget <laughs> that you are, come on, you're awesome. You can do this. You're a viral artist. Happy burning, guys. Bye. Don't forget to leave a comment. I love you.